everybody, what's going on? It's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we're gonna put together video number three, and hopefully we're gonna help you put together that first throw. Now, putting together the first throw when you're coaching a beginning discus thrower, super tricky, but it can be a lot easier than you're making it. We've already talked in video one, we talked about some basics, some basic terms, right? Separation, orbit, radius, heel toe position, block leg, delivery leg. Uh, we talked most importantly, how do you hold that discus? So if you haven't watched those first two videos, go do that. The second video we talk about how are we going to simply rotate into that power position. You're moving, connecting to the power position. Like we talk about inside the throwing chain reaction system, we're building the foundation. These are part of the foundation videos. This is the beginning, right? This is the stuff you need to understand basic terms, basic understanding of the movements, basically understanding some things. We're gonna expand on that in this video. So once we do, one of the biggest things we talked about in both videos, if the athlete is not holding that discus properly, that is going to override everything and it's gonna make everything a lot more difficult and that is surprisingly a much more common thing than most coaches realize. You'll have some athletes, well they're picking it up, I must be doing a good job. You are doing a good job, but it's probably that athlete or those certain athletes, you can say, have a bunch of athletes, this is where you're gonna see. Some athletes are gonna be able to apply the information, feel it, have better kinesthetic awareness, right? Meaning they can feel things. A lot of athletes have no perception of feel. They can't tell the difference between a good throw and a bad throw, how it's comfortable. They can just tell that they're uncomfortable holding that discus. So in today's video, we're talking about putting together the full throw. And there's a couple of simple things that we recommend when you do that. When you put together the full throw, you have to understand that what initiates the throw is the entry leg. We're setting up a hinge and we're moving around. Now notice when I do this, you're gonna see that my hip knee and foot are kind of on top of each other. This is gonna allow me to step into the center of the ring and now I'm back to what we talked about in the previous video, I'm gonna be able to squat and turn into the position. Now again, one of the things we talk about is that if this is increasingly difficult and your athletes are always off balance, one of the things is that they're, as they probably come in, they're probably opening up the body too much because when they're in this position and they turn the upper body, this throws everything out of position. So again, we talk about this in depth. We'd love to see you inside the system, but again, if you're just somebody that's wanting to learn some information, these are some simple things that are causing probably a lot of problems. And if you're a brand new coach, coaching a brand new athlete, you're not gonna see a lot of this. And understanding that the lower body has to move ahead and that the upper body, if it's moving ahead too, it's typically moving the athlete out of position and off balance, and that's gonna be a problem. So you're gonna to wanna to do a couple of things we're gonna recommend in today's video. So number one, of course, we're gonna assume at this point, you're going through this, you're learning, and you're putting that emphasis. You're, you're getting that comfort factor on the athletes holding the discus. And no matter how good the discus thrower is, they, they're going to have those throws where it's mistimed, it comes out of the hand, the angle's wrong. That's gonna happen. So when your athletes do that, let them know. Yeah, that's part of the whole process. And remember, one of the things we talk about extensively in our videos, in our camps, in our system, throwing's unnatural. It just takes time to feel how the throw is supposed to work. And the better the athlete, the faster they're gonna improve. The more determined the athlete, the more willing they're to educate themselves, that's a big plus and a lot of great things can happen when that happens. Recently had done an interview with Zane Weir. He's an Italian shot putter born in South Africa, is competing for Italy. The guy is 248 pounds and he threw over he threw like just over 70 feet at the Olympics. 240, pound for pound, probably the best guy in the Olympic Games. Fifth place in any other Olympic Games, this guy would have been a medalist with the exception of one. He threw further than Tom Walsh did at the 2016 Olympics in his first, but he got fifth because he's behind four of the greatest throwers in history point of this is he said extensively in this interview it took him a long time to understand the right feelings of the throw and then things jumped up so it's a process that takes time so keep that in mind so again remember when we start to put together the full throw what do we have to learn well let's look at it this way when we're here one of the first things we have to do is what, what I just showed you is to turn this and we have to create a wide sweep now some people will just say turn turn the leg and get this out 
And I think that's a good general cue, and you can learn that. So this is what to do, but we always teach, we call it a hinge. And we're learning how that hinge, and notice when I hinge, I'm pulling, and I'm naturally pulling everything here because I need this hip on top, so when I turn this way, I can go into the circle this way. Okay, really important. But you have to get it. A lot of your athletes are gonna do this. They're gonna hinge and turn. So inside the membership, we'll go through the progressions of pillar one and two. Remember, between these two pillars, inside our system, we have 23 drills, okay? Now, for the sake of this video, we're gonna talk about a couple of those simple drills to help you set up. But remember, we start out with setting up, and one of the key things that we wanna do is when we hold that disc is we want our athletes to stay in the center and feel how they move this way, okay? So you wanna see this. So we're trying to turn the shoulders on top of the hips. We don't wanna to create tons of shift. I think a lot of people see that and they see world-class throwers and there's a lot of biomechanical details that they're missing and they don't understand when they see that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just have everything, first things first, have your athletes wind. And what we're gonna do is a simple thing, we call it a hinge and then we hinge and step, right? So now I'm in this position, now I'm gonna step down and you notice we're right at the position we worked on in our second video. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the upper body from moving forward, we're gonna move everything with the lower body and we're gonna be in this position, now we're gonna be back and we're gonna be able to finish. Now, assuming that the athletes have gotten comfortable carrying the discus, this is gonna be infinitely easier, and this is also gonna show you which athletes are not yet comfortable carrying the discus because that's what's gonna make this movement so much more challenging for them. So, here's the thing. We focus on starting here. Have your athletes hinge, hinge and step. This foot's facing to six, they step in, and then they have a little bit of momentum, and they're gonna be able to move and throw. Have your athletes, if they're brand new and you're a new coach, what are you trying to teach? Lower body, lower body, lower body, right? And now, there's gonna be people out there going, oh, you don't have them moving the left arm right. And it's like, we're gonna get to that. This is a 101 video for people who are new coaches, coaching new athletes, and again, we talk about extensively in all of our stuff, whether you're a member, whether it's a video, whether it's a camp, throwing's unnatural and throwing happens quickly. So how do you make the unnatural natural and how do you do it fast? You're going to have to move through positions, learn mechanics, and then movement puts together. There are some people who will approach how you do that, but they're relying on the fact that you know you have a good accomplished coach and that coach is gonna be there day in and day out. The reality is why we created our system, why we put these videos out, because half the schools that we deal with, we already had multiple coaches call us this season asking us if we could recommend a throws coach. Most of the coaches we have using our system are already coaches someplace. We don't have coaches that are not looking for jobs. So the point is there's a lot of turnover and there's a lot of new coaches like yourself and that's why we're putting out this content. So when you see some of these things, these are simple tips designed to give you that right direction so that we can help you and help the sport, and that's good for everybody. Okay, so when we talk about this, lower body, lower body, you see what we call is a step down drill, then we're gonna squat and turn, and then we're gonna twist through. We're putting everything together. That's how a lot of your throwers should start. So what does that look like? I'm gonna just hold the discus and you're gonna see him do this. Boom, and they're just gonna guide that discus again nice and straight. Then what you can do is a simple drill, learn how to get rid of the step. You have your athletes learn how to do a 360. Notice I'm giving you a big hint. The lower body leads, the upper body goes. I'm in that nice 360 position because that's how the athlete's gonna get to this point. And now they're moving through and putting together that full throw. So the shame of things is that we've seen so many athletes over the years spending a season, spending two seasons, spending in some cases four seasons doing a stand throw, not moving to a full throw. We just gave you three videos that just showed you how really simple that is. Now, I'm gonna give you a couple of things to review. We talked about the terminology. Where's the orbit? That's the shoulders. Where's the discus? How is it moving around me? Notice it's generally level. What do most kids do? They do this, 
they drop the discus down. Well, where's the orbit? Well, how is that going to turn? Now they're off balance. Now they're doing this kind of stuff. So when you have your athletes doing this, stay level, okay? Have them here. So then, then they hinge, stay level, stay level, stay level. Simple as that. Watch that they're not trying to turn with the upper body. Turn with the upper body. Watch how that turns. See that? That's what you're going to see a lot of your athletes do. They need to learn how to turn on the lower body, turn that knee around. So what's one of the simple things? They turn this knee to the direction of the throw and keep the sweep leg wide. Now, why did we show you what we did at first? Hinge, step, wide sweep, sweep step into the ring, move into the position and come through. This is where people have to understand. Getting the athlete to feel the motion of the throw is super important, okay? And that's an easy way for you to begin. Now, remember, insider system, like I said, when we look at these first three pillars, the first two pillars, we have about 23 drills. Do you do 23 drills? No, what you do is of those 23 drills, every each athlete is gonna have their own little formula that's needed for those two pillars. That's a beauty of our system. It's a teaching system, and it's a system to help you assess and identify the need of the athlete. And if you're a coach, we're gonna address and show you and point out a lot of the common mistakes that you're facing because there's a lot of combinations. It's not about teaching you every possible thing that can go wrong. It's about teaching you how the throw works and how to solve those problems, right? And so you are prepared for unlimited number of combinations. That's what our throwing chain reaction system does. Okay, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed today's video and this helped you. This little series hopefully is going to teach you how to basically start understanding your terms, your orbit, your radius, how to hold the discus properly, how that all influences, and these simple steps to help you put together and get your athletes guided on putting together a full throw. If you are interested in learning more step by step and becoming and unlocking your potential as a coach or athlete coaching yourself, check out the link for our Throwing Chain Reaction System, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks so much. Hit that like, subscribe. Peace out.